Hello! This is Stephen from the Pittsburgh Parks Conservancy. Thanks for tuning in and watching our stream exploration video. By watching this video, you'll get to see some of the cool things that live in our streams. You'll get to learn how to observe behaviors or structures that help these organisms survive. Learn a little bit about how to explore on your own and learn why these organisms are so important. In this video, we're going to be exploring a stream in Frick Park called Falls Ravine. And before we get started, I just wanted to give you some time to think about what you already know about streams and what you might find living there. Hi everybody, I'm Nigel. I'm going to teach you how to explore stream if you don't have any tools or anything. Um, all you need to your hands, hopefully some waterproof shoes and a stream. Uh, here in this stream we have lots of big flat rocks and usually lots of really cool critters live under them. So I'm going to teach you how to do that safely. Um, you want to find a big flat rock of your choice. Uh, make sure that when you are about to lift it up, um, you feel really stable so you don't slip on any rocks that might have algae or anything on it. Um, you want to make sure there's nobody around you that you could drop the rock on. Um, and you want to take it, make sure you have a good grip on it, and lift it up to see if anything lives underneath. So let's see what we have under here. Whoa, okay, so there's so much cool stuff under here. I'm going to bring it over so Steven and I can show you. So here's the first organism we found under the rock that Nigel lifted up. And something that can be really fun to do when you're exploring stuff outside is just practice making observations and asking questions. So for instance, I might say, I noticed this organism has six legs. I see that it has two eyes. I notice these structures along its abdomen. They remind me of scales or feathers. I wonder what their function is for this organism. I wonder why they cling to the rock like this. I wonder if they can swim well. I notice that they have two tails. I wonder what they use them for. These are just a couple examples of some different observations or questions you might come up with. Now we're going to show you three different organisms that we found under the rocks. You may want to pause or rewind the video to be able to make more detailed observations. Feel free to sketch the organisms if that helps you notice different features about them.
right, so now that we're done looking at the critters we found under this rock, we're gonna gently place it back. It is somebody's home, so we wanna make sure that we put it back where we got it from. You can use both your hands to gently place it, and then you're all good. All right, hey everyone, Steven here again, um, and I'm gonna show you how to explore the stream using some tools. I've got a kitchen strainer here and a paintbrush. So these are the tools I'm gonna use to collect some organisms from the stream and get them into a container where I can view them better and look at all the cool features that they have. So now I'm gonna show you how to use a kitchen strainer to collect some organisms from the stream. You wanna make sure you position the strainer facing upstream so you want the water flowing down into it. So I'm gonna find a spot in the stream here to get it nice and flat against the bottom. And all of the organisms in the stream are clinging to the rocks and gravel and stuff upstream. So I'm gonna use my hand or maybe a stick to stir that substrate up and knock everyone loose. And then the current of the water is gonna carry them right down into my strainer. Uh, so I'll just stir up the rocks a little bit here. And I don't wanna be too rough, you know? Don't wanna injure anyone. But I wanna just try to knock some of them loose let them flow down into my strainer here. All right, so once I feel like I've stirred up enough of the um, rocks and stuff, then I'll lift my strainer up out of the water, and whoa, there is a whole bunch of stuff swimming around in here. Oh my gosh. Um, so. I'll uh, give you a close-up look at this here in a moment. Um, for right now, I'm gonna try to get one of these organisms into my container here using my paintbrush, my handy-dandy paintbrush. So I've got my paintbrush here, and I'm gonna grab my container. Get a little bit of water in there. Get my paintbrush a little wet. Then I'm just gonna kinda gently get one of these organisms to kinda grab onto the paintbrush, kinda scoop them up onto it. This takes a lot of patience. All right, so I got one of my friends in there. Let's see if I can get a different one too. So we can check out two things together. All right, so now I've got two different organisms in my container here and uh, We'll bring you in close to take a take a look at all the different features that they have. So here's our net after we stirred up a bunch of rocks. And you can see there's some stuff swimming around in here. Sometimes it's really hard to notice things. You have to look for a couple seconds before you're like, oh yeah, there's something moving there. So here's the first organism that we've found in our strainer. What do you notice about them? Can you see how many legs they have? Do you notice that their front legs look like big pincers? How many antennae do they have? Here's our second organism that we found in our strainer. We had to slow this footage down because they move really fast. They can both swim and crawl. Can you see how many legs they have? Do you notice anything else about them?
All right, so now that we've finished checking out some of the stuff from our, our sample here, we're gonna let everyone go right in the part of the stream where we caught them from. So I'm just gonna kind of dunk my strainer in here, use the current of the water to wash everyone out. Make sure everyone gets back into the stream here. Then I'll just do a quick little check. Because sometimes uh, some of the organisms you collect will kind of cling to the, the strainer. They don't want to let go. So it's always good to do a double check. But yeah, all good. All of our friends are back in the stream. So at this point, We've practiced observing organisms. We've showed you how to explore on your own. And now we're gonna get into a little more about why studying these organisms is important and what they can tell us about the stream. So we're gonna practice identifying this organism right here. If you want to learn more about some of the organisms that you're finding in the stream, there's a really great resource online. It's this website, macroinvertebrates.org. And if you're trying to identify some of the organisms that you saw, they have this really great ID key. So if you click here, it opens up a dichotomous key. And this can help you identify what organism you're looking at. So we'll start here. And the first question is, are there jointed legs? And if you click It'll give you some examples of what they're talking about. There's a lot of confusing vocabulary here, so it's helpful to have these pictures. And we've got four options here, and we said our organism had six legs. So we'll come down here. Does it have piercing or needle-like mouth parts? So if we click this, it shows you some examples. We didn't notice this on our organism. So let's say no. Maybe it's a hemiptera, but let's keep going and see what we find. Does it have a portable case? Okay, so it wasn't inside of some structure like this. So probably not. Does it have wings or wing pads? So here's what these structures look like. We're looking for either wings or these wing pads coming off of the thorax of the organism. So let's go take a look at our organism again. Do you notice any structures that look like wing pads here? It looks to me like they have some structures on their thorax just like this. So we'll follow yes. Does it have tail filaments? Okay, yeah, our organism had some tail filaments. I think we noticed two tail filaments on the organism we were looking at. So then we come down here. Does it have dorsal or lateral abdominal gills? So here are some examples of abdominal gills. And you can see in this picture over here, there are these tiny little structures along the abdomen. So let's look at our organism. Do you notice any structures that look like that along the abdomen here? We talked earlier about these scale-like things coming off the abdomen. Those must be gills. And gills have a really important function for these organisms. They're what helps them breathe. And having these exposed gills makes mayflies really sensitive to things like sediment that might be in the stream. But different mayflies have different structures, different gill shapes. Um, but ours had kind of plate-like or scale-like gills, so it must be a mayfly. So if we come here to the mayfly section, there's some information about them here. You can see there's a whole lot of different mayflies. So we can just scroll through, take a look at all the different kinds. I think ours was one of these ones. And it had two tails, so it was probably 
in this genus. That looks pretty similar. So this is a really awesome website. It's got great pictures that you can zoom in and see the details of things. And it's got a lot of information on these organisms. So you can see here under the characteristics, it lists its pollution tolerance. And that's really one of the most important things to know about these organisms is that a lot of them are indicators of stream health. So in the upper Midwest, they're rated as zero, which means they're least tolerant to pollution. So these organisms, they're really sensitive to pollutants. And a lot of the other organisms that we looked at are sensitive to pollutants too. But we have another video that goes into the details of how to use this website. If you want to use it to identify the bugs you're finding in a stream that you're exploring. So what does it mean that we found mayflies in this stream? Does that tell us about the health of the land surrounding our stream? What pollutants are mayflies most sensitive to? Does finding mayflies here mean that there are no pollutants? Explore on your own and see what other sensitive organisms you might find in an urban stream. Thanks for watching this video and make sure you check out all the other stream resources we have on our Parks on the Go page. Take care!